Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and Law. So we are continuing our dental anatomy sessions. So we finished till maxillary second premolar. Now we have maxillary first molar, a tooth which has got many features on each with As universal system. Then the Zygmunti Palmer system and the FTA system. Okay, FTI is 1, 6 and 2, 6. Zygmunti is six and six okay now we have the universal system one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen so central lateral canine first premolar second premolar and first molar Central, lateral, canine, first premolar, second premolar, and first molar. So, 3 and 14 are the universal numbering systems. Start with the chronology. The first evidence of calcification is at birth and the enamel completion around three to four years eruption by six to seven years and root completion by nine to ten years so it has got five surfaces and three roots the only tooth which has got three roots commonly but sometimes even premolar first premolar may have three roots but this is a tooth with three roots so we'll start with the buccal aspect. So as you see the picture, the geometric outline is trapezoidal with small uneven side present cervically. So I can see the mesial surface and distal surface. The mesial outline it is nearly straight till the contact area at the junction of occlusal and middle one third. Whereas the distal outline which is convex till the contact area at the middle of middle one third. Whereas the occlusal outline, that is the mesiobuccal cusp is broader, shorter and less sharp than the distobuccal cusp. So distobuccal cusp is narrower, longer and sharper. So you can see the distobuccal and mesiobuccal cusp. The cervical outline is irregular and slightly convex towards the root and the convex buccal surface which has got buccal groove which may terminate at middle third by a fault buccal pit or by two shallow grooves and also there is a presence of cervical ridge on the buccal aspect or buccal side. The roots from the buccal side that is the root trunk is uh, almost like four millimeters and three roots are seen from the buccal aspect the axis of the roots are inclined distally you can see a distal inclination for all the roots and there is deep developmental groove extent on the root trunk and the inclination that is a mesiobuccal root which is inclined distally distobuccal root which inclines mesially whereas the palatal root which inclines buccally okay the mesiobuccal root which is inclined towards the distal side distobuccal root inclined towards the mesial side whereas the palatal root which inclines towards the buccal side the longest root is the palatal root and the shortest root is distobuccal root okay so the palatal is the longest then the mesio uh, buccal root then comes the distobuccal root so this is the longest palatal and the shortest is the distobuccal Root. These are the three roots of maxillary first molar. Now the lingual aspect. There is no lingual convergence. The mesial outline 
it is nearly straight and form a perpendicular angle with the mesial slope of the mesiolingual cusp so you can see the mesiolingual and distolingual cusp so the mesial outline forms a perpendicular angle whereas the distolingual cusp or the distal outline is just convex and form a semicircle with the distal slope of distolingual cusp so you need to uh, correlate with the picture this is the mesiolingual cusp and this is the distolingual cusp this forms a perpendicular angle and this is a semicircle and occlusal outline that is the mesiolingual cusp is the largest and longest cusp its meso distal width about three-fifth of the meso distal crown diameter okay and the distolingual cusp is spheroidal and the cervical outline is irregular and slightly convex towards the root and the surface that is a convex uh, lingual surface and the cusp of carabelli is seen okay it is a very important short note cusp of carabelli which is seen on 60 percentage of lingual surface of mesio lingual cusp okay the cusp of carabelli is seen where it is on the lingual surface of mesiolingual cusp so it's a cusp ridges is 2 millimeter cervical to mesiolingual cusp that is cusp of carabelli and there is presence of lingual developmental groove and palatal root is conical end with a blunt apex which is in line with the lingual groove so you can draw a straight line through the palatal root mid and the lingual groove and parts of buccal roots are seen from this aspect on both sides of the palatal root now we have the mesial aspect so in mesial aspect the outline is trapezoidal with small uneven side on the occlusal side and the buccal outline so you can see the buccal outline here which is convex at cervical one third which is denoting the cervical ridge and concave at the middle one third denoting the termination of buccal developmental groove and slightly convex at the occlusal one third which is representing the meso buccal cusp so it can be divided into three the convex at cervical one third which denotes the cervical ridge then the buccal developmental groove and then the meso buccal cusp so the lingual outline it is convex with crest of curvature at the middle one third and the lingual outline which dips inward to illustrate the tubercle whereas the occlusal outline which is represented by mesiolingual mesiobuccal cusps and there is irregular meso marginal ridge which curves cervically and cervical outline which is irregular and convex occlusally and the mesial contact area at the junction of middle and occlusal one third and which is buccal to the center and there is shallow concavity usually present cervical to the mesial contact area and which extend to the root and the roots are mesiobuccal root palatal root only be seen these two roots are seen that is mesiobuccal and palatal so mesiobuccal from this aspect is broad and flat so two roots are seen from this aspect that is a palatal root and mesiobuccal root so the mesiobuccal root is broad and flat and its width at bifurcation area is nearly equal to uh, the two third of uh, the crown measurement that is a buccolingual two third of the total buccolingual measurement and the buccal outline extend upward and lingual outline is almost straight line the palatal root is longer narrower than the mesiobuccal root and it's like a banana shaped uh, whereas the distobuccal root is hidden from this aspect so you can see the mesiobuccal root and palatal root the root trunk and the mesiobuccal uh, cusp mesiolingual cusp 
visual contact area cervical ridge so on the distal aspect and mesial aspect uh, the distal convergence uh, whereas uh, we can see the distal convergence here but it so you can uh, see a comparison here from the distal aspect uh, with respect to the mesial on the distal aspect there is a distal convergence but here the wider mesial surface here we can see the convex distal surface except small concavity at area of cervical one third here the flat mesial surface and here we can see the distal marginal ridge which is curved cervically here the mesial marginal ridge is less curved and the straight cervical line on distal side cervical line uh, it is convex occlusally root trunk is 5 mm here it is 3 mm and from distal aspect three roots are seen but from the mesial aspect just two roots are seen to the occlusal aspect the geometrical outline is rhomboidal okay so there is a distal buccal convergence and mesiolingual and bucco distal angles are obtuse the mesiobuccal and distolingual angles are acute okay the mesiolingual and bucco distal angle are obtuse whereas the mesiobuccal and distolingual angle are acute and the crown is wider lingually and mesially so it has got four cusps uh, with four triangular ridges and tubercle the oblique ridge between mesiolingual and distobuccal cusp so the oblique ridge which is a very common short note which is present between the distal cusp ridge of mesiolingual cusp that is a distal cusp ridge of mesiolingual cusp and triangular ridge of the distobuccal cusp triangular ridge of distobuccal cusp so oblique ridge is present between these two and there is a major fossa that is a central and distal minor fossa mesial and distal and there is triangular fossa and the developmental grooves there is buccal developmental groove central developmental groove transverse groove of oblique ridge there is distal oblique groove lingual groove and fifth cusp groove so maxillary first molar is the only molar that is wider lingually than buccally and the pit is central pit so these are uh, various features of occlusal aspect so that was all about uh, maxillary first molar it is a very commonly asked question and many short notes will be asked uh, the occlusal anatomy the buccal side uh, palatal side all will be asked as a separate short note uh, and the fossas ridges and the grooves so short uh, notes the grooves of maxillary first molar or the ridges and the fossas so you need to draw a picture and label it properly so i'll come up with maxillary second molar in my next session thank you